Hello, this is Eric at Blue Mountain Precision. Um, I just wanted to go through some of our chambering here on our CNC lathe. Um, there's kind of a misconception out there. Um, I've heard people thinking that CNC lathes are kind of just manufacturer kind of uh, oriented, production only. Yeah, that, that's what they are. This is a production machine that we have. Um, but it doesn't mean that a gunsmith can't find out what machine he will use in gunsmithing for accuracy gunsmithing is what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about general gunsmithing. I'm talking about bolt action guns that are highly precise weapons. Um, so anyways, today um, I just got done doing a 6.5 Creedmoor chamber um, that's going to go on this Lone Peak Fusion uh, fully nitrated action here. Really sweet setup here. Um, this guy's going to love this rifle. Um, I'm going over a uh, few things here today. I want to start away from the lathe right here just to kind of show uh, what I have in my hand right here is a known go gauge. So this no and go gauge is, um, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but the no is a 473 and the go is a 472. And if I look on my chamber reamer print here, I can see from JGS that I'm going to a 472.7 and these are minus two tenths of a thou gauge. So my 473 uh, is going to just maybe barely start and the 472 should start. So that means that the back end of this chamber right here is not oversized. It's properly sized to the brass that you're going to use in this gun. So that's the first thing we're going to do here. Then we're going to set reset the camera up here and the dial indicator that's set up right here is a one ten thousandths indicator. Um, the end of the indicator, uh, the stem that's on there will make it read two tenths of a thousandths. Um, right now, uh, the machine is not running, but after I'm done doing this, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, machine on a slow speed of about 30 revolutions per minute, and I'm going to jog the z-axis over into this chamber and show you what bench rest quality chambering is in a CNC production lathe that has been properly set up for doing precise chambering so that these guns can shoot amazing at long distances. So anyways, and close distances. You want one whole groups? This is stuff that happens here at Blue Mountain Precision. So anyways, we're going to check out here. This is the go and the no go. So red one's going to go in here. We're going to see if it goes in. Nope, it doesn't. It just barely kind of but you couldn't force it in. So that's good because that right there is two tenths under that. So this is one tenth of a thousandths bigger than the spec on the reamers. So that's telling us the reamers right and that, that uh, the tooling was set right in my lathe and I didn't have anything offset. My offsets weren't wrong or anything. So that way my chamber reamer went perfectly home to within that kind of spec. And now this is the go, 472 minus 2 tenths, and it should go. And it goes. There you go. You can see it just barely, just barely goes in there to about the point where it should. And uh, so we know that this chamber is not oversized or overcut. So anyways, now I'm going to turn the machine on here and go ahead and get it running in manual mode. Uh, Punch some code in here and get this thing running at a slow speed. Let's just pick 30 on it. And I'm going to start the spindle up now. It's going extremely slow right now. I'm going to jog Z over my indicator so I can see exactly what this machine's doing in my chamber run out is. All right, I am just sitting right away from the chamber. Now, give me a little minute here. I'm going to reposition the camera right here on the indicator. You're not going to see me anymore. So, all you're going to hear is me talk about this. We'll do a little recap kind of afterwards. But anyways, let's move the camera here and let's see how this chamber turned out. All right, guys, uh, we just got over here to our uh, lathe. And I'm going to show you where the indicator is here, put a little light right on it. But you can see the indicator ball right there is right on the outside of the chamber. 
just about going in. So, anyways, let's go ahead and run the Z axis over just a little bit. It's going to do one ten thousand, one thousandths at a click here and get it over to where it starts on the chamber. There it is. There you can see our needle. The only thing that that's reading right now is the actual surface friction. That little flutter is only surface friction. That's it. So anyways, um, the indicators always have some air. That comes with manuals. I'm sure there's going to be CNC guys or machinists out there that comment on that and I'm aware of that. So if this thing even does have a 10,000 or so, it's a Mitsutoyo, it's a good quality expensive indicator um, on a really good magnetic base. So, you know, if it does, whatever, I don't care. I mean, that's the indicator error is indicator error, but right now that needle's looking pretty pretty to me. All right, so now I'm gonna jog it in slowly, and you can see the numbers, this is the taper of the case now, and you're gonna see it change now. I'm gonna drop it and leave it here on zero. Same thing, and just see that the only thing that needle's doing is fluttering because of surface friction. That's it. Doesn't mean the chamber's rough. If it was rough, you'd see that needle jumping like crazy. This is a 10 thousandths indicator. And they keep going up, or you're gonna see it climb up the uh, shoulder here in a minute, and I'm gonna have to reach in there and adjust the indicator up. There, it's right at the peak of the shoulder, so that's right where the shoulder's at, and it's got nothing. And then, boom, we're going to swing up the shoulder, and I am going to go ahead and adjust this back as we travel up the shoulder area. Just kind of giving you a indicator look at the blind side of a chamber that you normally don't see. We're just going to keep going up, and I mean, all the way up, look at that, I mean, there's nothing. You know that shoulder's perfectly clean when that is just surface friction on that needle. It doesn't even, I mean, just barely even moves. And we're just going to keep on going. And now we're in our neck. So there we are. Okay, so that's the very end of the neck right there. You can see the only jump on that needle is just friction on it. Um, not much going on right there. Oh, they just jumped out of the neck into the free bore. Same thing with the needle. Let me bring the needle around to the other side so you can see it better. Let me focus in on this again. So that's the free bore, which is the portion of the bore cut out right after the neck that determines the distance of your seating of your bullet depth. Now we're going in, you can see the lands picking up. See it starting to hop now? It's hopping over the lands. This is a five groove proof research heavy palm of barrel. Same thing, just kind of bumping up. You're going to start seeing a pulse now and that's going to be the actual lands. See? There's our pulse. I'm going to bring the needle around here again. You can see it's just falling in the exact same place every time. And that's just the that's portion of that's cut out. So that's the throat area of your chamber now. Now it's getting out of it. Once you start seeing it do a full swing and it doesn't change like right now, now that's perfect right there. So I set that barrel as good as I can set a barrel. I mean that thing is running to the nuts right now of the bore. And you can just keep going and it's just going to keep doing that because the whole entire throat area of this barrel is running absolutely perfect which is a bench rest quality chamber job. And that's all we do here at Blue Mountain. We don't chamber in any other way. No matter if it's a hunting rifle a PRS rifle, an NRL rifle, a bench rifle, it doesn't matter. Every rifle here gets the same treatment. So so there you go. Um, you can totally tell that this chamber is running just to the gnat's ass. So, 
stop the chuck there. We take a look at our threads. Um, besides this, which is going to get polished up on the barrel right here, we're going to put this barrel on a spinner and spin it on some 400 grit. And then uh, it's, well, actually, this one's getting seracoded, so this one will get bead blasted, but we'll still spin that up. That's just the edge where the cutter come, but you can see the threads. Everything else is absolutely perfect. Um, the chamber's absolutely perfect. Um, and that just goes to show, uh, you know, what what can happen with a production style lathe when it's properly set up um, to chamber barrels. Um, now this doesn't mean go ahead and call me. I'm not going to help you set up your lathe um, to do this. This is what I do for a living here and uh, this is for all my customers out there or future customers who might be wary on what kind of quality we have here at Blue Mountain. Um, our guns speak, speak for themselves. Go ahead and do any kind of research you want and you'll find out on what kind of hammer we can build you. So anyways, let me get this uh, camera out of here. I'm going to do a little closure on this video and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, thanks for watching this video and uh, this is a video on concentricity to a, a rifle's barrel bore in a production style CNC lathe. This is Eric. I'll talk to you here in just a minute. Alright folks, well anyways, I just I just hope this helps uh, some of you people out there make a decision on using us for your chamber work. Um, you can see now the quality that we put in and the expense that we, that we do not spare here at Blue Mountain. Um, with proper pin gauges so we know if there's oversized chambers, if our reamers are spec'd out right, they get measured prior to getting used. We always make sure there's no slag on them, that the chambers are clean. Um, you can see on the indicator that we just ran in that the indicator is, that chamber is cut to a tenth of a thousandth, if not better, it's indicator error that you're seeing in anything there that's bouncing. Um, you can see how proper alignment is with the chamber of this 6.5 Creedmoor going into that bore. Um, these 6.5 Creedmoors, I mean, they just shoot. And if you want to make a custom gun um, that's gonna shoot fantastic with a lot of these higher end quality factory ammos that are out nowadays, the 6.5 Creedmoor is a good little round for that. Um, by no means is this video pointing that. Um, it really doesn't matter if this is a 28 nozzler a uh, 300 Norma Mag, uh, 338 caliber. It can be from that size all the way down to a 223. It doesn't matter. Um, our chambering ways here at Blue Mountain are the same um, on all of our barrel connections and internal cutting. So everything's done the same way. Um, I'm not gonna give up all those secrets because um, that's something that took me years to perfect. Uh, running manual lathes until I jumped into the CNC world here and have been teaching myself and have some really good friends out there that are very savvy on CNC stuff that have been helping me along the way as well. Always ask questions. Um, that's that's my thing here. If I don't know, I'm going to find out, you know. Um, and that's the only way that you can build great guns as far as I'm concerned. If you don't know, educate yourself ask questions, get people involved that are professionals. So this is Eric at Blue Mountain Precision showing you a little video of how our new CNC lathe immaculately cuts chambers. Have a great day and shoot straight.